Hi. Today I'm going to show you how to make a rhombus tessellation. So what's a rhombus and what's a tessellation? A rhombus is a flat shape with four straight sides that are equal in length. A square is also a rhombus, but for this project we're going to be using this shape, which is also called a diamond. A tessellation is an arrangement of shapes closely fitted together with no gaps or overlapping. Not every shape can make a tessellation. Circles cannot. Can you find the rhombuses in this tessellation? There's one. There's another one. And there's another one. So this tessellation is those three rhombuses repeated over and over and over again. It makes the optical illusion of a cube. Do you see the cube? So, to make our tessellations, we're going to completely color in three sheets of paper, draw and cut out rhombus tiles, and then we're going to arrange and glue those tiles down in our tessellation formation. Now this may seem like a lot and it's overwhelming, but don't worry, I'm going to walk you through every single step. Are you ready? So pause this video, grab your materials, and meet me back here. Step 1. How to make the backing for your tessellation. Do you want a circle or a square? If you want a circle, you're going to need something round, like a plate or a bowl that's about the same size as your paper. Flip it over, trace it, and cut it out. Now if you want a square, put it lengthwise on the surface in front of you, take the bottom corner and fold it up to the top edge of the paper so that you make a triangle. Fold the seam, trace the line, unfold your paper, and cut the extra off. And now you have a square. So whether you want a circle or a square, this paper is pretty flimsy, this is printer paper, so we're going to need to glue it to some cardboard. So find some cardboard, I got mine from a pizza box, and you want to make sure that it's big enough for your square or your circle. For this project, I'm going to be using a square. So I'm going to trace it, cut it out and then I need to glue my paper to my cardboard. So I need glue, and I'm gonna put it all the way around the edge of the cardboard, and all in the inside. Then I'm gonna use the tip of my glue to smear and rub the glue all around. Then I'm gonna take my paper, and I'm gonna press it down on top of my cardboard, and smooth it out and then put that to the side to dry. For your circle, you're gonna do the same thing. So you're gonna trace your paper circle onto cardboard, cut out the circle from cardboard, and then glue your paper circle to your cardboard circle. Step two, completely color three sheets of paper. So the three sheets of paper need to be different values. Value means lightness and darkness of a color. So you need a light sheet, a medium sheet, and a dark sheet. And you can use whatever art materials you have for this. Crayons, colored pencils, markers, or even watercolors if you have them. So for both of my examples, I used analogous colors, which are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. Feel free to pause this part of the video to figure out which analogous colors you can use. The main objective is to color your sheets three different values, light, medium, and dark. And if all you had was a single crayon, you could do that. So the colors that I have are analogous. You have yellow, orange, red, and pink. And I have a different mix of media. So I'm gonna start with my lightest sheet, and I'm gonna use watercolor. So I need a palette, water, a paper towel, and a brush. When I paint this, I'm going to use a lot of water and only a little bit of paint because I want it to be very light in value. And I'm going to fill in the whole page. Then I'm going to set that to the side to dry. For my medium colored sheet, I'm going to be using crayons. I'm going to use a medium amount of pressure and I'm going to color in the entire sheet 
with mostly oranges and yellows and only a little bit of my red. I want the sheet to be a little bit darker than my lightest sheet and a little bit lighter than my darkest sheet. So for my darkest sheet, I'm going to be using crayons and watercolor. I'm going to be using mostly pink and red because those are my darkest colors. And then I'm going to go over the, my crayon with my watercolor. The goal here is to make this sheet as dark as possible. Put it to the side to dry, clean up your mess, and now I have a light sheet, a medium sheet, and a dark sheet. So now's a good time to put this stuff to the side to dry and take a break. You've been working really hard. So for step three, we're going to draw and cut out our rhombus tiles. So a rhombus is actually an equilateral triangle flipped and mirrored. So two equilateral triangles and they all have the same length side. So grab your lightest sheet and make sure it's dry. Then you're gonna flip it over and with your ruler, you're gonna measure out this line right here, which is the same length as all the other sides of the rhombus. So we're gonna draw this on this paper. So to start, you wanna draw a five inch line across this, the middle of your paper. And make sure you put a little notch at the five and a little notch at the zero. Now halfway through that is a 2.5, two and a half inches. We're gonna make a little notch there. And then we're gonna take our ruler and we're gonna draw a perpendicular line from that point to the top of the paper. Doesn't matter how long it is, it just has to go to the top of the paper. And we're gonna do the same thing on the bottom. Make sure it's as perpendicular as possible. So now we have five inch line here and I'm gonna write that down because every other line has to be five inches. So we're gonna meet our five on our ruler up with the notch that we made and our zero up with this line up top. And then we're gonna draw a straight line. Now you're going to repeat that same line on the other three sides of your rhombus. The more accurate you are when drawing your rhombus, the better your tiles are gonna come out and the less likely you are to have gaps. So now to make the tiles, I need to draw diagonal lines going this way and diagonal lines going that way. So remember, our lines are five inches. So what you need to do is take your ruler and measure out inch intervals on every line. So take your ruler and lay it down on that line. Line up the zero and the five on the lines. Take your pencil and mark each inch interval. So one inch, two inch, three inch, and four inch. And now do the same thing on the opposite side. One inch, two inch, three inch, and four inch. So now we need to connect all of the notches we just made. So start at the bottom. Make sure you line up both notches and complete the line. Now just keep going, connecting all the notches that you made so that you make diagonal lines. Great, so now we have to do it on the other side. So grab your ruler and measure out your inch intervals. 1 inch, 2 inch, 3 inch, 4 inch, same on the other side, and then connect your notches. So now we have our rhombus tiles lined up. These are going to be our light rhombuses on our tessellation. So these ones, light, 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 light. All right. So now you're gonna have to draw that rhombus and all the other little rhombuses on the rest of the papers. So rewind the video and do it again on your medium and your dark sheets. All right, so now you should have your rhombus tiles drawn out on all three of your sheets and you need to cut them out. So when you're cutting, be careful to only cut on the diagonal. If it helps, you can erase the two lines that you made at the beginning.
So just go through and cut out every single rhombus from all three of your sheets. Make sure to keep your tiles in separate piles, light, medium, and dark. Step four, arrange and glue your tessellation. All right, so I have all three of my tile piles here. I have my light, my medium, and my dark. So you wanna keep those separated and you wanna get your backing out. Make sure it's nice and dry and lay it flat. So we're gonna start with a light tile. Now you can put it down wherever you want. Maybe you wanna start here, maybe you wanna start more at the top. It doesn't really matter where you start. So I'm gonna get some glue. I'm gonna glue the back and I'm gonna press it down and smooth it out. Next is a medium colored tile. So same thing. I'm gonna put it right here at this angle. Put glue in the back, put it down, line it up with my light colored tile and smooth it out. And now for the dark color. Glue it, line it up, and press it down and smooth it out. All right, so you have your first cube down and now we have to build the cubes around it. So if you look at my example here, I have a light, medium, and dark. And then it repeats again. Light, medium, and dark. So I'm gonna grab another light colored tile. I'm gonna glue the back and I'm gonna line it up with my medium tile that's on my other cube. Smooth it out, grab a medium tile, glue that one, line it up, just as you did with the first cube, but you're doing it in a different location. And then your dark tile. Glue it, line it up, and press it down. So now look at that. We have two cubes. Light, medium, dark. Now we have three cubes. So just keep repeating this process until you either run out of tiles or you filled up the entire page. All right, so I finished mine. I ran out of tiles. So now I have to decide how I want to trim it. So I can either go straight across and straight down or I can kind of cut out the boxes like so. This would make it look more three-dimensional. I can also do a combination of these two things. I'm gonna cut straight and around the boxes. So if you wanna pause this and take a closer look at how I cut out my lines, now would be a good time for that. All right, so there you have it. That's how you make a rhombus tessellation. So I hope you had a lot of fun and I hope you try again with different colors and maybe you could even try a different shape next time. Thanks for watching, see you next time.